Yeah, so welcome to the Pete Docket Guide to Rehab, or specifically Hope Rehab, uh, which is the only rehab actually in my guide to successful rehabs. And um, yeah, we're going to start here at the Sea of Love, where it all began, that first counselling session with Dylan. Yeah, on the way back to Hope, uh, well, I think we might have kind of a quick whistle stop tour of the rehab before my last one to one. style cars they have to pick up clients just in case they have any uh, last minute doubts about coming here and they decide they want to check into a hotel for a few days like I did they just sort of get bundled into a, a blacked out car. Probably the first thing they see is the plane. Just beyond the uh, gym here we're going to have a look at the open air design with the uh, the latte balls accessories. Yeah, I had this specially brought in just in case I need to evacuate in emergency. Um, but we couldn't move the chocks, so we've got the bikes in instead. Ping pong table. That's the Pete Docket Memorial ping pong table, celebrate four days clean. Yeah, we're going to turn this into a studio, but. Uh, we just got around to cleaning it. Well, I say we, I mean Cat here. It's quite nice that cap, actually. Uh, with George S. This is for when you find yourself. Uh, Cover up shit creek halfway through the tree. I'm pointing all these things out, but the truth is, there isn't really a great deal to distract you here, it's, which is which is the beauty of it for me. It's just a really simple setup. It's to be a snake farm, and then it became a resort for newlyweds. Quite spectacular from this angle, which you never really see it from, you know. But this is where you come when you the pressures of group therapy become too much, and you have to hide in the bushes and have a little cry. Like I said, it's mostly just tranquility, tranquility itself. That's why everyone's out and about. We have the pond where the loyal hope, well, as loyal as any members of staff, I suppose. You've got Shelley and forget the big one's name, but don't be shy. Here he is. Yeah, snail mad if you want to get on a good side. Yeah, they love snails, the turtles. In fact, it got to a point where they were accusing certain clients of being codependent with the, tur with the tortoises. But like all good rehabs around the world, there's a good balance of you know, well-trained counsellors, you know, experienced recovering addicts you know, to help with beers and shitloads of geckos. Group room one, where at nine o'clock you will be expected to attend group therapy process or someone's timeline or step on powerlessness the sort of thing you go through with your counsellor first you know and then present it to a group I mean I, since I've been here there haven't been more than 15 clients at any one time and as few as six so it's a full house really when it's 15 people it's like, that's two tone or no tone where George lives Um, yeah, this is where I live. Uh, sort of set up camp here. Uh, I'll show you the room. So I can show you the rooms. I don't want to go nosing in anyone else's room. I wouldn't 
just let this sort of reflect on the rooms in general. It's a bit cluttered. So they do clean it every day, believe it or not. Uh, I came in with so much to do. So many songs to write, so many books to read, but actually they do kind of keep you busy. So I've been looking at Dr. Bob and the Good Old Timers, which is a biography of recollections of early AA in the Midwest. Yeah. It's incredible, really. I think the basic message is you can you can still be a raging pisshead, but you just don't have to drink. So it's kind of like using the various flora and fauna around. I get the feeling I am responding to a call. That's a Lee Mavis lyric. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, he wrote to me and wished me the best, actually, Lee Mavis. No, he didn't. He just said I had dirty hands, but I'm sure he wishes me the best. I'll pick the Libertines, which they gave me when I... In our prime, look how there, there is a moody pose. It's about 12. John was 12 there. Some notes I took from mindful, mindful Paul's mindfulness class. Pali Sanskrit, Metta, may you be happy. Karuna, compassion, may you be free from suffering. Maduta, emphatic joy. Upeka, equanimity, self-awareness, concentration, mindfulness, listening without judgment. Don't get on the train. Uh, and here's where we have to give a positive and a negative statement about other peers, so we'll leave that one. They've mostly left anyway, it's not nice to do. So the rooms, as I said, are cleaned every day. Try this and write what we've got here. <clears throat> Hope Rehab Thailand, December Pow. And the blue boat, which is known as the blue boat, and some sort of bench areas, which is just the communal smoking gossip. Uh, now this is not, it's controversially known as the longhouse. Uh, I suppose it depends if you've got a wide angle shot or not, but fairly long. And well, let's look at it closer, shall we? What kind of recovering addict could be having a one spot in a house like this? Um, I'll let you see, yeah. Uh, there's a great full recovery addict in bed. There's Maddie. We're going to say hello to her. and um, depending on how long you've been in treatment just be laying on your back or I don't know, doing the old uh, Tai Chi moves push the darkness away and then great river and all that various poses like uh, warrior pose I should say so I've got straight what's the warrior pose that's the mango tree. Palm off on the counters, but somehow you managed to get a room in a nice place like this. I don't really want to shoot in anyone's room, but I think the the small sort of Alice in Wonderland door combined with a heart-shaped toweling mat should give you the feel of the general place. The elephant stools, the rocking chair, the huge ashtray and the Crossword puzzle. And this is absolutely ow. <laughs> so it's an absolute luxury, really, when you think about it. I mean, it's hard enough getting to grips with recovery uh, back in England. I think where it's all on top, especially in London, Manchester, Liverpool, anywhere really. Somewhere like this, you just got room to breathe, and yeah, people people have what they call boundaries here. I think I knew about that before I came to treatment, but. You know, normally I probably wouldn't come up here. Yeah. 
but because I know that it's not many people here, I have a little nose around and see what see how the other half lives. Yeah. <laughs> so here we have it. Combination of old world old world charm. And luxurious with internet facilities and genuine lizards. Spacious grounds. Litters with the wreckage of some ill fated ill fated voyages. Yeah, like metaphorically as well because I think they closed this place down as a retreat for newlyweds because like ninety percent of them were splitting up after the first week. And that's worked reverse in uh, in treatment. You know. Ninety percent of people who leave here actually stay clean for the first half hour upon leaving treatment. So that just leaves the pool. I'm gonna put my swimming shorts. I left out like exactly where Simon lives, no one's really sure. Some say he nests in the tree with King Kong, he's like the resident monkey. Some say he lives in the gatehouse. Some say he doesn't sleep at all. <laughs> like a kind of therapeutic Margaret Thatcher. I don't know what they look alike, but if you know he needs to sleep, that's the joke. Okay, well that's nearly left at all. Oh, and that's the camera. Where Simon lives, no one 